The United States government decides it needs some money, so it calls up the Federal Reserve and requests, say, ten billion dollars. The Fed replies, saying, sure, we'll buy ten billion in government bonds from you. So the government takes some pieces of paper, paints some official looking designs on them, and calls them treasury bonds. Then it puts a value on these bonds to the sum of ten billion dollars and sends them over to the Fed. In turn, the people at the Fed draw up a bunch of impressive pieces of paper themselves, only this time calling them Federal Reserve Notes, also designating a value of ten billion dollars to the set. The Fed then takes these notes and trades them for the bonds. Once this exchange is complete, the government then takes the ten billion in Federal Reserve Notes and deposits it into a bank account. And upon this deposit, the paper notes officially become legal tender money, adding ten billion to the U.S. money supply. And there it is: ten billion in new money has been created. Of course, this example is a generalization. For in reality, this transaction would occur electronically, with no paper used at all. In fact, only three percent of the U.S. money supply exists in physical currency. The other 97% essentially exists in computers alone. And in modern money mechanics, a bank must maintain legally required reserves equal to a prescribed percentage of its deposits. It then quantifies this by stating, under current regulations, the reserve requirement against most transaction accounts is 10%. This means that with a $10 billion deposit, 10% or 1 billion is held as the required reserve, while the other 9 billion is considered an excessive reserve and can be used as the basis for new loans. Now, it is logical to assume that this 9 billion is literally coming out of the existing 10 billion dollar deposit. However, this is actually not the case. What really happens is that the 9 billion is simply created out of thin air on top of the existing 10 billion dollar deposit. This is how the money supply is expanded. Let's assume that somebody walks into this bank and borrows the newly available nine billion dollars. They will then most likely take that money and deposit it into their own bank account. The process then repeats. For that deposit becomes part of the bank's reserves. 10% is isolated and in turn 90% of the nine billion or 8.1 billion is now available as newly created money for more loans. And, of course, that 8.1 can be loaned out and redeposited, creating an additional 7.2 billion to 6.5 billion to 5.9 billion, etc. This deposit money creation loan cycle can technically go on to infinity. The average mathematical result is that about 90 billion dollars can be created on top of the original 10 billion. In other words, for every deposit that ever occurs in the banking system, about nine times that amount can be created out of thin air. <laughs>